but there hasn't always been camps for everybody. So back in 1961, Abby Rogers wanted to make sure that everyone got the chance to go to camp, and she went on a crusade to do just that. And now you have the Abby Rod. Abby Rogers, Civitan Camp, and joining us here on Good Things to tell us a little more, I think. Are we good, Rhino? All righty. We are good to do that. We got Ron and we've got Kay Boone. Hey, Ron and Kay. You with us? Yes. Hi. This is Ron McNeil. Which is a listener of Good Things. I have to give you a shout out for that. Thank you. You were listening to the show and you said, you know what? This camp that I've been a volunteer at for 22 years classifies as a good thing. So thank you for connecting us. Yeah. So, uh, Rebecca, I have um, one of the directors of the camp on the line with us. Her name is Kay Boone. And uh, I'm going to let Kay introduce herself and just talk about how she got involved with camp and talk a little bit about Miss Abby and and how this camp got started. All right, Kay, take us back to 1961. I feel like if I'd have met Miss Abby, we'd have been friends. She sounded like I, a firecracker. She was, she was friends with everybody, that's for sure. But in 1961, Abby had a Girl Scout troop, and she also had a neighbor who had um, significant disabilities, and so she wanted to combine her love for scouting with her love for people with disabilities. So she took 18 teenagers and 18 children and got two 20-man tents from Camp Shelby and went to Camp Tia, the Boy Scout camp. And they spent three or four days. That, like, they had three people on staff that year. Now we've grown to about 125 people on staff. And uh, first week, we have about 85 children with disabilities, and this week, we have 75 adults with disabilities that all have a good time at camp. So where's this camp located, Kay? We, we're now we're at Camp Inacana, which is the Girl Scout camp. Um, when once they built their pool and had indoor plumbing, <laughs> <laughs> they, they moved from the Boy Scout camp and latrines at Tiot to, to Inacana. Well, I love this. This is definitely a good story. So Miss Abby saw an opportunity um, and took it, or saw a gap, I guess, in opportunities, and she wanted to fill that gap to make sure everyone got the opportunity to, you know, go to camp. So what are some of the accommodations that had to be made different to make sure that everyone had the, the, had the choice to go to camp or ability? Well, the first thing was funding. Um, actually, to, she asked the Hattiesburg Civic Hand Club to buy her some cots for the kids to sleep on. And now, all these years later, they still are who our funding is through. We're completely dependent on donations, um, and, and it's all volunteer. We have no paid staff. And so just for Abby to start that process and to start the process of acceptance of people with disabilities in the community and, and building those relationships with teenagers so that they would want to come and volunteer, which has opened up a whole new avenue of the camp because these teenagers, these girls and boys teenagers, they grow up to be teachers and physicians and lawyers and employers. And so it's just taken on a whole different meaning even than when it started in 61. And, Rebecca, over the two decades that I've been here, I can't tell you how many uh, wheelchair ramps, how many wheelchair-accessible uh, toilets and showers have been built out here. Um, you know, the story that is just uh, uh, really, really on our hearts is, what, two months ago, we had a tornado that came through South Forest County, and, uh, and, and it tore up the camp or tore up parts of the camp. There's a, the cabin that I slept in for the last 16 years, a tree fell on it right where I usually sleep. And so a month and a half before camp started, we had porches to rebuild, cabins to rebuild, and um, – I guess I guess Kay would tell you that uh, there were there were questions about whether they were going to be able to pull this off. I said I say they because Kay and Terry and Chris, our directors, are the miracle workers here. But they but the labor and the materials that they use to rebuild these cabins, to add new porches to these cabins, 
so that uh, not only would we have a place to stay, but would have a better place to stay than we had last year. That all came together in just a matter of weeks. And it's just incredible what uh, what people have donated to this place over the years. Okay, that's when you know you have a home run is when the community also buys into what someone is trying to do, like Miss Abby. And it feels like at least the Pine Belt community really embraces what's going on there at camp. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, Ron, when did you find out about uh, Abby Rogers' camp? I was in a play and had it when I was a child. When I was 10 or 11 years old, my mom took me to be in a play in Hattiesburg, and just over the Rainbow Theater was a, was a fundraiser for camp. And one of the directors, a guy named Mike Garner, was the director of the play. And he said, when you're old enough, you need to come to this camp that we're raising money for. And so I showed up. Um, without knowing anybody here except Mike, who uh, we actually have two weeks of camp. And I came on the first week that first year, and Mike came on the second week that first year. So I showed up not knowing anybody. Um, And I remember um, the first day that I was here, the first day that the uh, children with disabilities, I was at Kids Week that year, the first day that they showed up, the first activity that I went to was the pool. And I remember uh, vividly one of these children uh, jumping in the pool. And Rebecca, I've never seen the kind of joy on his face that I saw from him just jumping in the pool. He was He's non-communicative. He's in a wheelchair. But when you put him in that pool, he was, he was set free. And, boy, I knew at that, at that moment I knew that I was going to be a lifer. Well, I think that's how so many kids feel at camp. They get the opportunity to break the cycle of their everyday or mundane responsibilities, whether it's school or, you know, whatever's pulling on them, and they get into the great outdoors there in Mississippi, and they're allowed to sort of feel the air and see the birds and smell things and enjoy the pool, and every kid should have the opportunity to to get to do something like that. Miss Kay, when, when did you, well, you know what? There's the music. Uh, stick with us. We're going to learn more about Abby Rogers Camp coming up next. Finding out more about the Abby Rogers Civitan Camp. It's been around since 1961 when Abby Rogers decided she wanted a camp for everyone, including those with disabilities. And joining us to share more is Ron. He's been volunteering with camp for the last 22 years and one of the directors, Miss Kay. So what is, I know camp's going on right now. How many more weeks of camp do you guys have until school starts back? We will be here through Friday, um, so uh, we, it, which which cuts up on a deadline for a lot of our high school counselors. That you know, year-round school. Some of them, some of them are starting uh, are starting next week. Some of them are some of the schools are starting this week, and we have we have some of our counselors that are taking a, a vacation day on Friday to be with us instead of starting school. That's awesome. You know, Ms. Kay, I want to talk about the camp counselors for a second because Ron, obviously, back 22 years ago, found out about the opportunity to volunteer from from someone in the community. Here's someone's opportunity to maybe find out for next year if they've got a teenager that might be a good fit. Who is a good fit for volunteering there as a camp counselor? Okay, our counselors have to have completed the ninth grade. We used to um, go by age, but now we decided it's more. It works better for us to go by grade. So once they finish the ninth grade, um, they can go on our website, and they can't get an application on our website, but they can get the emails and phone numbers that need to be called. Um, our website is the name of our camp, Abby Rogers Camp dot org. And you'll see pictures and stories, and it'll tell a lot of information about the camp. I think that's just good for parents to remember. You've got a lot of teenagers or, you know, that are looking for either, you know, bumping up their volunteer hours or just having a different experience during the summer than just sitting at home. And I think we forget sometimes that, you know, even if you're not a Girl Scout or a Cub Scout or whatever, you can still find where you fit in volunteering for something fun like camp because ron as a volunteer how much fun do you have it's it, it, it's the it's the best thing you know that 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 i have ever done on this planet <laughs> um you know like i like i said 
some of us just realize that we are lifers. We have that we have that uh, that enlightenment moment where we realize this is what we're going to do every summer for the rest of our lives, or as long as we can. And it's just so cool to um, uh, to expose the children and adults to something that typically they probably wouldn't. Like uh, this year, the first year we have we have a zip line. And I mean, where 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 else on the on earth are children and adults with disabilities going to be able to experience something fun like that? You know, something that a lot of people have access to, but normally they don't. Um, so it's it's just amazing. The fun part is seeing them be able to experience something that they did not expect to be able to experience. Okay, I asked you earlier on good things, and we we ran up against the hard break. Was how you got uh, led to camp um, to Abby Rogers Camp. How did you find your way there? Well, I actually have been here since 1979, so I've been here a long time. But I was a sophomore in college at Mississippi State, majored in special education, and I had no idea why. I had been on one Easter egg hunt with people with disabilities, and so I heard about Abby's camp. And she graciously let me apply, and so I started coming, in, like I said, in 1979, and I've come every year since. It's like Ron said, it's just, it's just family. It's just what you do in the summer. Well, you mentioned now it's up to like 125 volunteers, I think. What do you right. think? Total between the two weeks, it's really closer to 150 for the, both weeks all together, yes. And everybody's volunteer. How many campers come through in those two weeks? About 175. So how do you how do your campers find you? I mean, is it a small network where they, you know, it gets around or is there potentially more folks listening that didn't know that Abby Robert at Abby Rogers camp was an opportunity for them? Well, it's, we have limited numbers, and basically our policy is we send applications to campers who have attended before because they really don't understand why they don't get to come because they, they come every year. And then as we have spots available, we reach out to um, people who have contacted us through the website to fill in those spaces. We do primarily focus on um, people in the Pine Belt area because that's where the majority of our funding comes from. Um, but there are people that come from different places outside of the Pine Belt. Miss Abby sounds like someone, again, I think I would, I would have gotten along great with. What was it like for her to watch an idea in 1961 to be, you know, realized, embraced, and then grow like it has over the years? Oh, I can't imagine what it would be like for her. She was such a pioneer. And when you think about it, in 1961, the attitude towards people with disabilities was to keep them at home. You didn't see them out in restaurants and working and participating with people without disabilities. And she changed all of that. And so now um, she was a teacher also, and she really focused on community involvement for her students and then for the campers as well. And they do all typical activities like anybody that would go to camp, arts and crafts and music and recreation and boating and fishing. And like Ron said, we added a zip line this year through donations um, that were given in memory of one of our community members. And so just everybody pulls together to to provide this experience for the for all of us, for the staff, counselors, and the campers. Ron, you mentioned 22 years ago you didn't have much experience with people with disabilities. So when you stepped out to try to do something, you know, different or unique, what was maybe the biggest misconception that you had about working with that population? I think the biggest misconception that people have about uh folks with disabilities is that it is difficult to relate to them on anything other than like a caretaker level. Um, the, the coming to camp opened my eyes to the idea that um, you, you, can, you can be friends. You can talk about, yeah, I can talk about my problems with, uh, with, with people with disabilities. Just yesterday, uh, I have uh, a I, I, I take insulin and I have high blood sugar. Well, one of our adults 
has high blood sugar. And so, uh, you know, he and I were he and I were talking about diabetes, and I was checking my sugar in front of him. And uh, so, I think the misconception is that you have to relate to people with disabilities on more like a caretaker level, when it can just be a, a you know a camaraderie level and a friendship level. And you once you start seeing past the disability to the person, you know, it opens you up to a community that you never thought you might have. Kay, you mentioned you guys run fully on donations and the generosity of people's time. If folks want to go and learn more about Abby Rogers Camp or volunteering or, uh, you know, being a camp counselor or all of the above, how do they do that? Again, the best way is to go to the website, Abby Rogers org, and it has all of our numbers and our email addresses are on there. And we and we also have, a, like, a needs section where we list things that we're looking for. Um, but the website is the best way to get in touch with us. Well, and, that's, and that's A-B-B-I-E-R-O-G-E-R-S, Civitan Camp. So, Abby, A-B-B-I-E. Well, y'all enjoy your last few days there in Mississippi's Great Outdoors. Real life is waiting on the other side of camp when school starts back. Oh, no. no, real life is at camp. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It should be. We should be in camp mode all year long, which I know you guys definitely um, are. So thank you for taking time away from the campers. Ron, have you gone down the zip line yet? No, not yet. I don't know if I will or not. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a wuss. So maybe. Oh, I'll totally do it, Miss Kay. Have you taken it for a spin? I did go down the zip line. Ron, you can't let Miss Kay out zip line you. <laughs> I'm being shamed now. I'm being shamed on Super Talk. I guess I'll have to do it. You definitely will have to do it. It's a lot of fun. Just don't close your eyes because then you miss the entire experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate, again, your time and all the things that you guys are doing there at camp. Have fun. Thank you. How cool is that? Yeah, you don't want to close your eyes on a zip line. Then you'll be like, oh, man, I got to do it again. I missed everything. The whole point is seeing yourself go through the beautiful view at kind of top-notch speeds. And two, if you close your eyes, you don't see the tree <laughs> coming at you where you're supposed to put your hands or your feet out or whatever, whatever George, to stop. George, George of the jungle. Watch out for that tree. But it, it's still all in good fun. Lots of fun at camp. All right, stick with this. We got more for you up next. 